Hi there, and welcome to our Vault of the Flames bundle guide. Following the Temple of the Waves that released with the Beta of Palea, the game has seen the addition of another mysterious area, the Temple of the Flames, and with it another set of bundles to complete. The questline that unlocks the Vault of the Flames bundles is available once you have completed the Vault of the Waves questline. If you haven't completed all the associated bundles yet, don't worry, it only requires the completion of the actual questline. You should receive a letter from Hassian that kicks off a series of quests that will ultimately open the Temple of the Flames. And once all tasks are completed there, the new bundles. The new Vault of the Flames bundles are once again located within Kilima's Night Sky Temple. This video includes all relevant information, tips and maps for each step of the bundles. If you do need help with the completion of the previous Vault of Waves bundles, make sure to check out our related guides. Let's start with the Flame Rod bundle. It's the only bundle that requires fishing. The first fish you need is a Radiant Sunfish. It can be found in the rivers of Kilima and can be caught at any time of day. The only requirement is the regular worm as bait. However, it's a rare fish, so it might take a while to catch one. Next up is the Flame Tongue Ray. It shares its habitat with the Radiant Sunfish, the rivers of Kilima. It can only be caught during the morning and daytime hours and requires glowworms as bait. The flame tongue ray is the only epic fish you need to catch, and luckily it's not too hard to reel in. By the way, if you are low on glowworms, make sure to only reel in the fish you need and recast your rod once the previous fish has let go from your hook. That's an easy way to save your bait. Another fish that can be caught in Kilima is the striped sturgeon. It's an uncommon fish that can be found in the lake, which includes the fisherman's lagoon and the entire shoreline. The striped sturgeon requires a regular worm as bait and can only be caught during evenings and nights. The last fish required for the flame rod bundle is the Dawn Ray. It's also an uncommon fish, but can only be found in the rivers of Bahari Bay. The good news is, you don't need bait for it. Actually, it can only be caught without bait. The bad news is, it only appears during the morning hours, so your fishing time is very limited. It is fairly easy to reel in though. Upon completing the flame rod bundle, you will receive one new cosmetic bobber for your fishing rod. The Pyroflob bobber. Moving on to the Brightbug bundle. As its name implies, this bundle requires you to catch several insects. The Paper Lantern Bug is a common insect that's native to Bahari Bay. You can find it all along the coastline as well as throughout the forest in the north of Bahari Bay. While it shouldn't be difficult to catch one of these blue glowing bugs, keep in mind that it only appears during evenings and nights. A similar but rare insect is the Bahari Glowbug. It can only be found throughout the fields and cliffs in the south of Bahari Bay. Like the paper lantern bug, it's a bioluminescent bug that only appears during evenings and nights. You can recognize it by its bright green glow. The Spitfire Cicada is another insect that can be found throughout Bahari Bay. However, it is limited to the trees it likes to inhabit. Look out for a bright orange-yellow insect that is attached to medium and large sapwood tree trunks in the region. Since it shares its color scheme with the trees, it can be easily missed. You might alert and find this rare bug by chance though, when running close to or attempting to chop the trees. 
one last thing. The Spitfire Cicada can only be found during morning and daytime. The last insect required for the Bright Bug Bundle is the Fire-Breathing Dragonfly. You can find it in Kilima throughout the Mirror Point Ruins and Mirror Fields, as well as east around Baldur's Farm. While it's a rare insect, it can be caught at any time of day and is recognizable by its orange body and yellow wings. Upon completing the Bright Bug Bundle, you will receive three Supreme Smoke Bombs. Next up is the Ember Seekers Bundle. It's a bit different as it's more of a mini quest. You will need to contribute six Ember Seeker medallions. The first one you should have already received after talking to Gina for the Vault of the Flames quest. She also hints at the first of the other five locations in Bahari Bay. Here's a map of all five locations where you can find treasure chests that contain a medallion each. Upon completing the Ember Seekers bundle, you will receive a new housing item, the Emberborn Brazier. Last but not least, the Seer Chef bundle. This one revolves all around cooking and ingredients. One of the required dishes is Chapa Masala. If you don't have the recipe yet, you can buy it at Red's Cooking Guild store. It requires cooking level 8 and costs 2500 gold. To cook it, you will need two stoves. And the most challenging ingredients to procure for the recipe are one Dari Clove and one Heat Root. Speaking of heat roots, you will have to contribute five of them to the bundle. Heat roots can be found growing on cliffs and mountains throughout Bahari Bay. It's easy to forget to look up sometimes, but keep an eye out for this rare spice in lofty places. If you're not having any luck finding them, there are alternatives. For example, you can find five of them in a treasure chest within the Temple of the Flames. Or you can buy them for 6 guild medals in Ashura's foraging guild store. The stuffed tomato contribution is currently bugged and due to be fixed soon. The recipe is not in-game and we also believe the contribution is likely to be exchanged with one for the stuffed phoenix fire pepper. You can't contribute the dish right now, but you can at least prepare for it. The stuffed phoenix fire pepper recipe uses the newly added spice peppers, which you'll need to grow on your plot. Seeds can be purchased for 170 gold from Seikis General Store. The cooking recipe for the stuffed phoenix fire pepper can be acquired from Red's Cooking Guild Store for 2000 gold and requires cooking level 7. Should the upcoming hotfix require a different dish, we will share what's needed in this video's description and pin a comment. The last ingredients required for the bundle are Dari Cloves. This is one of the rarest to find spices. It can only be found in the north of Bahari Bay, and while there are plenty of confirmed spawn points, it's rumored that only two of them appear during a spawn cycle. We don't know if that is true but we can assure you that they are extremely rare to find. Also note that once someone has gathered the Dari Gloves, they will despawn within 5 minutes. Alternative ways of obtaining this rare spice are for example Ashura's Foraging Guild store, where you can purchase them for 12 skill medals. There's also a quest that rewards you with 12 Dari Gloves, which is pretty awesome. It's Shane's level 3 friendship quest called Stargazer. Upon completing the Seer Chef bundle, you will receive a new cooking recipe for spicy rice cakes. Now, if you have completed all four of the Vault of the Flames bundles, you will also receive an additional very unique reward, the Ancient Rock Garden. This is a special housing item dedicated to the fabled Kitsu, 
it allows you to offer an item once per day for a chance to receive a gift from the shy creature. And that's all for this guide. We hope you'll be able to complete all the bundles without too many difficulties. If you'd like to see more content from us, please don't forget to leave a comment, give us a thumbs up and subscribe.